Chapter six of And Thus He Came by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter six The Burden Bearer. He, bearing his cross, went forth. The sound of the running feet of the man smashing through the burned stubble ceased abruptly. He stopped at the threshold of the door. No friendly bark of dog welcomed him from the barn there came no gentle lowing of cattle no homely clucking of chickens like the house the byre too had been ruined gutted with flame the soldier whose march had brought him back to his own village that night stood in the entrance of what had been his home and stared at the smoking walls the charred roof gaping to the sky the empty casements the enemy had been there he whispered his young wife's name he called softly to the baby as if they might be sleeping somewhere within the devastated house he listened for a reply but none came perhaps he would have been thankful even for a groan or a cry of agony anything that meant life but all was silence within without yonder on the winding road at the foot of the hill he could hear the trampling of men the groaning of wheels the clank of iron cavalrymen the jingling of bits and sword sharp words of command the army was advancing he could delay no longer he must get back to his place in the ranks summoning his courage he crossed the threshold and stepped into the vacant emptiness of the house everything was gone but the four stone walls there were unrecognizable heaps of ashes here and there he bent over them fearfully in the twilight wondering whether the shapeless formless masses were something caught his eye the one thing intact apparently he stooped over it it was the baby's shoe white it had been originally he remembered it now it was stained with blood that was all that was left, a little baby shoe, blood-spotted. He pressed it to his heart and groaned aloud. A spasm of mortal anguish shook his frame. He lifted his clenched hand toward the sky, overshadowing the roofless walls. Now he suddenly became aware that he was not alone. There was someone else in the room. He saw vaguely, indistinctly, a figure strangely clad, staggering on with bended back as if under some crushing load. He stared in the twilight, striving to concentrate his faculties. The figure passed by. On its back was a shadowy something, beams of wood roughly crossed, he decided. It raised its head and looked at him. The face was somehow lighter than the rest the man's arm fell the room was empty after all he stared at the little shoe was it somewhere well with the child with its mother unbuttoning his tunic he thrust the little shoe within over his heart he straightened up away off on the road a bugle call rang out above the tumult he turned away seized his rifle shouldered it stepped rapidly toward his regiment and his duty. End of chapter 6